For kids in the 80s and early 90s, our only source of gaming info was magazines. Most companies didn't budget for TV commercials, so aside from poster insert advertisements and upcoming games articles, we rarely knew what games were on the horizon. So in April 1991, when issue 23 of Nintendo Power arrived, featuring a new game with a robot throwing a razor-sharp boomerang, kids were intrigued. On this episode, we're going to dive into this 8-bit hybrid mysterious Nintendo Power cover game, Taito's Power Blade. There are thousands of classic games, and just as many ways of rating them. But if you love retro games as much as I do, and just want to know if a game is worth playing, then only one question need be answered. Twenty-second Century Warrior When Earth's new master computer is attacked by aliens, only Nova, lord of the ancient power blade, can hope to battle through to Control Center and restore the database. Let me get this straight. It's the 22nd century, and flat tops are still a thing? And seriously, lord of the ancient power blade? He's got a tank top and a boomerang. And you have to restore the database? Does that mean database as in the Excel spreadsheet entered by Shane and Jesse in the cubicle by the window? Or as in a military installation where data is stored? I digress. Let's face it, story was never the strong suit for NES games. It's all about design. By 1991, developers had experimented with platformer mechanics enough to know what did and didn't work. Taito was paying attention and borrowed elements from established games in the genre. Explorable, backtrackable levels. An agent hidden in each stage that will give you access to the level exit. A three-tiered upgradable primary weapon. And selectable stages that can be completed in any order. Power Blade has it all. You must power up your boomerang, thoroughly explore each of the six selectable sectors, and collect ID cards from the agents hidden in each area. Power Blade combines all these elements well, but to be a great game, you also need a great protagonist. Enter Nova. With rippling muscles, shades, a smug look on his face, and a brown flat top to die over, the protagonist is level 10 cool. D Director, there's something I need to tell you. I go bleach blonde for cutscenes and most marketing materials. You don't want to mess around with a roided out drill sergeant with a flat top and a boomerang, even if he does run like an idiot. <laughs> and speaking of Nova, his image on the cover art looks a lot like Arnold from The Terminator. And as you might imagine, the A-list actor had a few choice words about the matter. I love my lawyers come after you and stuff. I'll squeeze your head between my bicep and forearm like a walnut. Arnold's lawyers sent artist Mike Winterbauer a strongly worded letter, to which Winterbauer responded claiming the image wasn't Arnold, but a picture of himself. Yeah, right, there's no way there's another specimen of human perfection such as myself and all that sort of thing. Then he produced this proof. Ah, uh, clearly I was wrong in the matter. You are a very good looking man, now we should become best friends and all that sort of thing. But the game isn't called Nova, it's called Power Blade, because your weapon is the true star of the game. You start with a single basic boomerang that can be thrown in eight directions. Multi upgrades allow you to toss two and eventually three at a time. Boomer upgrades increase their strength, and stars give you three levels of range. But the most powerful weapon in the game is the Power Suit. While wearing it, Nova will not be damaged until he's hit three times, and his boomerang becomes the mighty power blade, which can cut through walls and eliminate almost anything in one shot. Rounding out the game are items such as grenades that damage all enemies on the screen, hamburgers that refill health, 
and energy tanks that can be used from the subscreen to refill all your energy. Environments in the six sectors are varied in appearance and theme. You'll explore the Rocket Center, Power Plant, Biological Research Center, Construction Zone, Shipyard, and City. In each sector, you'll scour the map for the hidden agent, obtain the ID card to access the security room, and fight a guard to collect the tape unit for each level. Tape unit? After completing each sector, you must battle through to Control Center and face the leader, and ultimately, his brain. Not a bad-looking boss, actually. Well, what about the music? Well, it has some nice melodic parts, but there's nothing that really hits me like a boomerang to the back of my bleach blonde flat top. Also, the tracks feel very full, almost too full because there's very little dynamism. And for that reason, I especially appreciate the bits with the subtle bridges that break up that musical barrage. The Sector 2 theme sends out serious Mega Man vibes. But perhaps my favorite track is the ending theme with its somber, reflective qualities that really help you decompress after the stress of battling through to Control Center. My main complaint is that the tracks don't really accentuate their environments, and the Biological Research Center music could have just as easily been used on the city level and it wouldn't change anything. In fact, aside from the ending theme, only the music after each sector is disarmed really fits the mood I might expect. There's clearly a lot of questions you would have in such a situation such as this, and the most pertinent question that we would want to ask you is it fun? I don't know. Yes, you do. It's extremely fun. There's something so perfectly 8-bit about Power Blade. It borrowed so many little elements from other games that it feels familiar, and yet it has enough of its own personality that it feels fresh. To this day, decades after that cover of Nintendo Power opened my eyes to the existence of Power Blade, I still love it. And even though it has a password system, it's actually short enough to complete in one sitting, which makes it feel like a good movie. The only complaint I ever hear is that it's too easy. When you're fully powered, enemies offer zero resistance, so the challenge comes only from platforming segments, which can make it feel a bit like you're just going through the motions. There is an expert mode that adds knockback damage and forces you to finish levels in a third of the time, but once you've mastered level layouts, it doesn't make much difference. That said, I find the gameplay excellent, the power-up system addictive, and the simplicity a refreshing two-hour dive into pure 8-bit fun. With a flat top.